Code formatting is one of those things that sounds super mundane, but it helps you a lot if you do it right. Just like in the English language, you can probably get away with not adhering to the right punctuation rules or spelling things properly. People can still make sense of what you wrote, but in general, it is much easier if you adhere to the standards. And it's the exact same thing with code. If you adhere to code formatting rules, then chances are that your code is much easier to read. And since the person that has to read your code is most of the time you, it helps you a lot if you format your code properly. Thankfully, you don't have to do all of the work on your own. There is the Styler package that you can integrate into RStudio to help you with the code formatting. And in this video, I show you how the Styler package works. So let's head into RStudio. Inside of my Quarto document, you will find a code chunk that loads the tidyverse. And then it takes the penguins data set from the Parma penguins package, selects a couple of columns, and then does some calculations with mutate. We even use a cross here to apply this function on top of multiple columns. And we also modify the sex to replace the missing values with unknown. All of this code is pretty terrible to read. And the main cause of this is that we didn't include any white space. You see with code formatting, it is much nicer to have some white space, for example, after commas, just like you have normally in English. And you also have some line spacing here, stretching this out onto multiple columns, doing things like these, having some space here, some space there, just stuff that makes these things look nicer. There's another one. And also between these operators, we can also have these white spaces. So I mean, after operators like the division symbol here, same goes with plus and so on. Okay, it's just nicer to read that way if you stretch out your code a little bit. And the point of this is to make your code skimmable. You see, usually you don't want to read code like you would read a book from left to right and then the next row and then the next row and so on. You want to quickly skim through the code and then go into the section where you want to modify something. Say you want to find out, okay, I want to do some calculation here. There are even more white space missing here. There's actually a lot of white spacing that we should put in here. But say you want to drop into here and apply this function on another column. Then you quickly skim through the code and see, aha, across there's calls. Okay, I can throw in my new argument in there. So that's why it's helpful to have skimmable code. But really code formatting is also tedious. You've just seen how tedious it was to make all of this happen here. But the nice thing is that you don't really have to do it manually. You see there's this styler package that you can install as you can install every package like install packages then you put in styler and then it will install the styler package and once you have that package installed you can do all of that with just a couple of clicks let me throw in the terrible code here again just to demonstrate that okay so this is the terrible code and then you can call the styler function and the way I recommend to do this is to use the command palette that our studio has integrated. And the way to open that is to use control shift and then P. Remember the shortcut control shift P. And then it will show you your most recent commands that you executed. You can see here that one of my things that I like to do is pick and insert emoji from the ER emoji package. But also one of the things I like to do is to style the actor file. And if this command is not available for you, then you have to install the styler package. Only then can you use this style active file. And if you don't see this command at the top here, then you can simply type into the search bar style, and then you will find all of the things that are related to style. And then with that, you could hit style active file. In your case, it will probably be down here. But since I've already called this, it's up here for me. Okay, so once you called it once, you can just use it here from the recent commands. And if you execute this, it will modify your style. And you see now that it has included all of the white spaces. That's nice but it doesn't do line breaks. You see here, this one is still in one line break. There are probably ways to modify this, but honestly, it's not worth the effort. You can just throw in a couple of line breaks yourself. The tedious part is clicking in here and then modifying this to go onto the next line. You can just throw in the line break and then you can just do Control Shift P again and choose Style Active File, press Enter, and then it will style your file for you. And that way it will then automatically do the line breaks for you of wrapping these parentheses and comma in line so that everything is neatly formatted. You can see here that I always get a notification that says using style transformer styler tidyverse style. And the way you can change that or maybe you even have to do it is to use the set style. And if you do that, then you can put in this stuff here. It's styler colon colon and then tidyverse underscore style and then these parentheses. But I think by default it should be in there anyway. Just make sure if, if you don't get this notification, then you will have to set the style manually. But really you only have to do this once. After that, it's always enabled like this. There are a lot of things that you can 
modify inside of this tidyverse style function, but really I feel like this is too much effort. I already get the most out of what I've just shown you here. Adding the white spaces and when I add line breaks, which isn't that hard to do, I let Stylo do the rest of reformatting everything. You see I'm already familiar with the tidyverse style, so I try to code like this whenever I write code. But sometimes you forget or you want to change things later on and then you also need to change the code structure. For example, here I've put in everything into one line because I felt like, okay, this one here is kind of a short command. I can just leave this in one line. It will be legible that way. But then I execute this code and I see, hmm, maybe I want to put some other conditions for this unknown as well. In that case, I just add more conditions like I want to do this only for those penguins that also have a body mass larger than 3000 and also they should have a flipper length that is less than 30. I don't know why I would choose conditions like this but that's just what it is. The code actually wouldn't even work because body mass g isn't inside of here anymore so let me just comment out this line so that way the code would work and we get something like this but honestly it doesn't really matter if the code works or not. I want to stress what I would do in this scenario then. Right now this one isn't really skimmable anymore because I have to read the whole line to figure out what is going on there. So that is why what I would do is to put everything onto a new line and then I could just call Styler and see what it can do for me in this setting. Okay so it doesn't add any line breaks but at least it reformatted this parentheses here so I don't have to worry about this. So I can do these things manually and set active style. It didn't change anything yet because this one here was already wrapped for me. But just to demo this whole workflow, let's just undo all of this. Let's just put this into this badly formatted thing here. So I would add a couple of line breaks and then I would simply put this shortcut here, Control Shift P, and then I would style my file that way. Saves me a little bit of work of re-indenting these things here. It's much more tedious if you have a lot of nested stuff in here. Here it was still an easy one. I could have done this by hand. But in a lot of cases, Styler really helps with re-indenting all of these things. So that's how you can use Styler for your code formatting too. Helps you a lot with adding these white spaces. And also it helps you re-indenting stuff when you change the structure of your code. It is not a cure-all. It cannot do everything. But I feel like it is still a helpful tool to use for all of these restructuring purposes. And especially if you are a beginner and forget to add the white spaces, then it's definitely helpful to let Styler throw in these white spaces for you. And with that, we're done. As always, you can find the blog post to this video in the description of this video. I hope you found this valuable. Let us know in the comments what you think about Styler. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.